Hello everybody, happy Sunday morning, hope yours is going well. We've got another Seahawks video to get to today, but first we just hit 2,960 subscribers to the YouTube channel. I want to give a shout out to all the subscribers, and special tip of the cap goes to the channel members, especially elite channel members, Brandon McKell, Scott Todd, Hasher for MVP, VGK Tiger 75, Ragai, um, Salacious Crumb, Brendan Nelson's haircut, it's... Reno and its hoof, or excuse me, the Reno and its hoof. All right, it's been a couple of weeks since I made a video like this. It's been at least a week, and a lot of things have happened with the Seahawks since then. So, once again, I'm going to be trying to take a deep dive into the Seahawks' current salary cap situation and try to estimate how deep in the red we are and what we can do to get back into the black. Because, as I've said many times in my videos, as of right now, with the information that we have available to us, the Seahawks are, in a general sense, over the cap. And you can't be over the cap. So either the team has already done some things to get under the cap, or they are about to and just need to officially announce it. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at where the Seahawks stand right now, in terms of the salary cap for 2021. So if you go to Spotrack, you scroll up here, you can see that our estimated cap space, including all players currently rostered, is 3.9 million, or just under 3.9 million. And this is without including several contracts that we've recently agreed to, including Dunlap, Ford, Fuller, Hyder, Neal, Ogbwehi, Simmons, and Al Woods. So that's eight contracts that we have not accounted for in this chart. And as I said yesterday, one of these players is probably going to count for against the cap more than the amount that we are under the cap according to Spotrack. So, like I said, we're over the cap. So let's talk about how much over the cap we are in this video and discuss the things we can do to get under the cap. So let's take a look. All right, starting from the position of being 3.9 million under the cap, let's start uncovering the things that we might do in order to figure out where we are. So these are going to be mostly estimates because we don't know for sure how much the cap it is going to be for these players, but we're going to do the best we can. So let's start up here and Dunlap. What's his cap hit in 2021 going to be? I estimated 5 million. It could easily be a million or two more or even a little less. There could be void years. We don't know exactly what we did with this contract. We only know it's an average value of 8.3, but you could backload it like this. You could do void years and make it even a little less. But I'm going to estimate 5 million for now and adjust later if something else happens. So with just this one contract added to the list, the cap space goes into the red by 1.1 million. Okay, next, who are we going to take a look at here? We're going to try Puna Ford. And I've read one or two things that indicate that his cap hit in 2021 is going to be about 4.4 million. It could be a little more, could be a little less. We don't know yet. There could be void years again. But let's say it's the 4.4 number that I saw back when he first signed. So that being the case, we're looking at a current status of being in the red of $5.5 million. All right, let's keep going, and Kyle Fuller, we kind of know what this one's going to be, 850000 that's just the going rate for a tender of his, um, of a player of his status, so that puts us at a little under $6.4 million. All right, next up, we have Kerry Hyder. I think the cap hit is estimated to be about $2.5 million for 2021, that puts us at $8.9 million over the cap. Continuing on, Ryan Neal, he's another guy we tendered, so we know it's going to be right about 850000 That puts us at $9.7 million over. All right, let's keep on a move in. Cedric Ogbwehi, we haven't gotten word on how much his contract his value is, but I'm going to guess $1.5 million. It could be a little more, it could be a little less. Pretty easy to imagine. It could go either way. Um... But let's say it's one and a half million. That puts us at 11.2. If you have a different take on what you think these contracts might be valued at, it's pretty easy for you guys to do the math. Feel free to do so. Next up, we have Jordan Simmons. I estimated 1.2 million. Uh, again, like Cedric Ogbwehi, I can imagine this one being a little more or a little less pretty easily. 
and that puts us at one uh, 12.4 million over and we're in the home stretch now let's uncover this next column al woods is two million i hit we know the contract is one year is three million but let's assume we use a void year to push a million of that cap hit into 2022 because i just can't imagine we would put al woods on the cap for 2021 for three million dollars that's more than chris carson's cap hit that's more than carrie Hyder's cap hit so I'm going to assume that we're going to use the void year with Al Woods and take on a cap hit of $2 million. That puts us at $14.4 million over. And finally, the draft pick cap pool uh, for 2021 is, well, the cap hit estimated from the draft pool in 2021 is going to be $2.56 million or so. That puts us at right about, as of this moment, $17 million over the cap. All right. So now that we know what we have to work through, let's start figuring out what we have to work, what we have to work through it. So first of all, let me just say once again, these are just estimates, especially the numbers like Dunlap and Ford and Simmons and Obwegi. So as we get more information, definitely keep an eye out for me reevaluating where we stand in terms of the cap and the things that we can do in order to mitigate maybe a bigger cap hit. But let's just go ahead and work with this for now. All right. So the first thing that the Seahawks can do to get under the cap, and this is something I talked about at length yesterday, you give Jamal Adams an extension. And we don't know exactly how much money we can save by giving Jamal Adams an extension. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to estimate it's going to be about $4 million. You can get his cap hit down to about $6 million for 2021 and therefore save $4 million. So if we do that, then we are now just under 13 million over the cap. So that's the first step. That's an easy slam dunk home run thing you can do to um, make this year go down a little easier. So next, the next thing would be the Russell Wilson restructure. I know some people are a little uncomfortable with this, but I just feel like you have to do it. Um, I know that if he doesn't play well this year or things just don't go well this year, a lot of people will want to trade him. And it's going to be very hard to trade him if we restructure him, but I don't see any way around this. It just has to be done. So if we restructure him, we can free up almost $12 million in cap space in 2021. And as you can see, this is kind of why we have to do it. Look at how much money you can free up doing it and look how much money we need to free up doing it. Hey, quiet over there. Sorry, guys. But anyway... This gets us to just over a million dollars over the cap. So we're almost there, not quite. So let's go ahead and free up another bit of uh, contract money by restructuring the kicker, Jason Myers. And restructuring him can save up to 1.2 million against the cap almost again in 2021. This gets us in the black, but it only gets us in the black by about $150,000. And um, while this is certainly a good start, $150,000 in the black is not enough. You need to have a few million dollars freed up in order to um, be able to pick up free agents in the middle of the season, pay injured players, call up players from the practice squad. You need to have a little bit more freedom than this. So either we need to keep doing things or one of the one or more of these players up here needs to take on a smaller cap hit for 2021. And that's possible. It could be Dunlap. Ford, Okwaki, Simmons, you could probably scrape together a few million bucks from getting them to push their cap hits out. However, assuming that's not the case, or assuming that maybe we even have a bigger cap hit up here than I'm accounting for, we need to look elsewhere for help. So let's go down the list and get into the more painful stuff. First thing on this list would be the Bobby Wagner restructure. And this is something I'm really not comfortable doing. I want to give our option, I want to keep our options open to be able to release Bobby Wagner next year without taking on a huge cap hit. Restructuring makes that harder. However, it is an option on the table for the Seahawks. They can free up $6 million bucks in cap space for 2021, and that gets them well into the black by over six, almost $6.2 million. That's enough to go into the season and feel pretty good about. That's enough to pick up uh, maybe even a couple UDFAs and low-level free agents. That would get you back into the back into the black in a pretty healthy way. So let's keep going. There's still some things that this team can do, but each one's going to be painful now. Now we're getting to the stuff we don't really want to do, but it needs to be discussed regardless. 
let's take a look. So the first thing you can do that hurts is trade Tyler Lockett. And this is a way to free up a massive amount of cap space. One swift move could take a, could could alleviate all of these cap issues and free up enough space to bring in a couple more players even. Trade Tyler Lockett, you save eleven and a half million. It hurts because we don't have an obvious replacement for him right now, but you can get one and there's a good chance it'll work out. So that puts you at about 17.7 .7 under. That's more than enough to bring in guys like A.B., Austin Ryder, and have enough left over for the season. All right, what else can you do? The only other player I think you could consider trading is Quandre Diggs. And doing so would save $5.6 million against the cap, getting you to $23.2 million under. So... You, obviously, you can mix and match these different things you can do in order to get under the cap and uh, give yourself a little bit of room to spare, but these are the two players you could trade to free up a lot of cap space in 2021. Um, at this point, obviously, if you did all these things, that's tons of cap space, but just for the sake of being you know, robust, let's keep going. Let's take a look at what else you can do. Uh, this first thing would really hurt, but you can cut Dwayne Brown and save $11 million. If you did this, you would immediately have to move to get another left tackle because we don't have that guy on the roster right now. But if you want to free up $11 million just by cutting an old player, you can. And all in all, that would get you to uh, $34.2 million under the cap. Uh, two more things you could do. And again, I want to stress this is not necessarily what I'm advocating for, but it's on the table and I want to spend a credible amount of time talking about it you can cut Brandon Shell and save 3.4 million and get yourself to about 37.6 million under the cap and finally the final thing you can do is cut Trey Flowers and I actually wouldn't be surprised if we did this in order to uh, get under the cap without restructuring Bobby Wagner because while Flowers is on a rookie deal, he's relatively cheap and he has a little bit of potential. He's not very good and he didn't play well last year. So cutting Trey Flowers this offseason would save about $2.2 million. And in total, that would get you to about $40 million under and we don't need to do that. But don't be surprised if Trey Flowers gets cut to maybe push us over the finish line. And that's all the stuff I can see us doing to get under the cap. These are all the options available to us. Feel free to mix and match these options as you like them. I think most people are on board with the Jamal Adams extension, the Wilson restructure, the Myers restructure, and maybe the Trey Flowers cut, but I don't think very many people will be on board with trading Lockett, trading Diggs, cutting the tackles. And I think there will be a mix of takes on the Wagner restructure. So... It depends on your perspective, but these are the options as I see them. I'm going to get out of here. Peace out. Go Hawks. Thank you for watching. Streams later on. I'm going to be a little busy today, but you will see me a little later. And yeah, this is what you have to do in order to get under the cap this year. The question is, which options are we going to take?